Leanne and Martin Smith wreaked havoc on their children in a way that can only be described as Valo Daybell esque. Martin was accused of molesting Leanne's daughter for a decade. Martin and Leanne ran to Spain in order to avoid Martin's arrest. Eventually, Martin was arrested and extradited to the UK to stand trial. A few days after he was extradited, Leanne took her two youngest children on what she called a perfect vacation and then murdered them in her hotel room. Martin was convicted and died by suicide in prison. Leanne is serving a 30-year sentence. everybody, welcome to the True Crime Squad. I'm Christy Brower, here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey, Katie. Hello. How's it going? Oh, it goes. It's going fine. You got your youngest off to her second year of college. I did. We're back to being empty nesters, so who knows what's going to happen. Right. Now you'll go back to doing whatever you want, whenever you want. Right. We we went feral last time. So you did. I'm sure what's on the way now. Yeah. <laughs> and also just a, you know, a, a distinct uh, decline in dishes and laundry. That's what happened last time. And groceries, because we quit buying them. Just <laughs> ate what we wanted, where we wanted, when we wanted. And yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good yeah. here. Yep. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Glad yeah. to hear it. Well, this is our Wednesday episode, and yeah. we do have quite a lot going on. I think, Katie, you're going to kick us off with some WTF news. Who am I? Yeah. You know, years ago, before it got cool to buy out storage units, we used to do that. Mm -hmm. Then it became a reality television show, and then people, at least in our area, all thought they should go buy storage units and be belligerent to each other, and, well, we quit going because it wasn't fun anymore, and they were selling for way more than you'd, you know, want to uh, pay because, basically, the way storage units work in most states is if people don't pay on them for a certain amount of time, the storage unit uh, company takes possession of it and auctions it off or sells off the contents in order to pay your bill and you just lose all your stuff. Yeah. And so we would buy them and sell off the contents, you know, and right. it was really fun most of the time. Mm -hmm. Except for that time we found some hard drugs that scared the crap yeah. out of us, but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> mostly it was fun and interesting stuff. I always had a fear though. Oh, and we used to joke about we're never buying one that has like a deep freeze or anything in it. Cause you know, <laughs> what if, just yeah. Oof. Well, in New Zealand, last week, a family uh, purchased a storage unit and the at, at auction, and the entire contents of that storage unit was delivered to their home, and they started sorting through the contents of the storage unit, and there were some suitcases, and they opened up the suitcases, and they Ooh. had human remains in them oh god yeah Oof. so of course they called the police the police came and got them and started an investigation and verified that they are the remains of children oh god and that they believe that they have been there for a considerable amount of time their words wow yeah so here is a statement uh by the uh, police Formal investigation procedures are ongoing, which means police are not able to comment on the identities of the children. After they are identified, the deceased children's families will be notified. We want to reassure the community our investigation is continuing to establish the facts to ascertain the full circumstances around the deaths of these children. This includes establishing when, where, and how. The nature of this discovery provides some complexities to the investigation. However, we are continuing to treat this matter very seriously, and we are determined to hold the person or persons 
responsible for the deaths of these children to account. So they said the investigation. Children, how many? Mm -hmm. two. Sorry. Oh, two. two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are handling it as a homicide. And of course, they are saying that they don't believe that the family who, you know, found the suitcases have anything to do with this whatsoever. So, Ugh. obviously, not. Uh, they're doing, but what a horrific find. And yeah, wow. Yeah, I think I will never buy a storage unit ever. I know. That's like everybody's worst fear. Yes, it right is. There. So, uh, what we have learned in the past about the New Zealand police, uh, especially when it comes to missing children, is that they are relentless. So, I have a feeling they will probably solve this case. They will. We'll keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. So, with that, I am going to kick the mic back over to you for our main case. Okay. <laughs> So this case sort of piqued my interest because there are some similarities to the Lori Val Vallow Chad Daybell case, although mm -hmm. this case was back in um, <coughs> sort of between 2010 and 2012. Uh, sort of interesting. So this is the story of Leanne and Martin Smith. Now, they were not married, uh, mm -hmm. but they were in a relationship for more than a decade mm -hmm. and they had the same last name. So that's a weird little quinky dink. Yeah. Um, so Leanne had a couple of older children with, with someone else before she got into a relationship with Martin. Mm -hmm. Martin was a, a hypnotist and oh. identified himself as a medium. And he was on the UK television show, Most Haunted. Oh, really? Okay. Most Haunted, unfortunately, is sort of a problematic show where a lot of stuff went wrong, um, oh. including the deaths of one of the main hosts, eventually Martin's death, and then some real scandal coming out that some of the footage on the show had been faked. They were like doing, oh. you know, ghost hunter kindness of things, right? Uh -huh. So that's Martin. So then we have uh, Leanne, who worked for uh, Child Services. Yes, they were in the UK. And she was not someone who worked with children, but she worked in that department. Well, after they'd been together... Um, around 10-ish years, mm -hmm. her daughter uh, reported that Martin had been molesting her for nearly that entire time. Oh, no. So, you know, um, most good mothers, you know, would have yeah. kicked him right to the curb, called the cops, got yeah. rid of him, you know, took taking care of her daughter. Mm -hmm. And they did at the time have a child together, a young child together. And, you know, taking care of her older daughter and son as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, Leanne, things get a little darker in this situation. Mm -hmm. Leanne was absolutely obsessed with Martin. Mm. And when it came right down to it, she chose him over her children. Sure. And she and Martin ran to Spain with their daughter, Rebecca, who was, I think, two or three at the time. Mm -hmm. So they ran from the UK to Spain, hid out in Spain for a while. <laughs> using um, aliases and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, then they had a robbery at their house. Oh. So they called the police. And when the police started investigation, an investigation, they did discover that this was Martin Smith, who had a warrant out for his arrest in the UK. Oh. And, you know, the uh, government had been looking for him. So... I'm getting some Nick Aliverdian vibes here. Yes, a little bit. Yeah. So Martin was arrested and then he was extradited to the UK to stand trial for the sexual abuse of his stepdaughter. Mm -hmm. Well, only just two or three days after he was extradited, I guess mm -hmm. Leanne just kind of freaked out. She couldn't live without him. Um, she's got, you know, her son and daughter, because in the meantime, they'd had a, a baby boy. So they had like a five-year-old and like a 10-month-old at this time. Oh, God. Through all of this, her biggest fear 
was that child services in the UK was going to take her children away from her. Um, having worked for them, I guess, I don't know that they could come to a different country and take her kids. And the one, the little boy was born in Spain. He wasn't a UK citizen, but the daughter was anyway. Yeah. So she was worried now that they'd caught Martin, that they were going to come and take her. She wasn't big on making good decisions. So. No, she wasn't. Uh, not at all, actually. Um, so she took her tiny children to the beach on a vacation. She said it was a perfect vacation. Where have we heard terms like that before? From stable geniuses, that's where. Mm -hmm. uh, then she uh, suffocated them to death in her hotel room. Oh, no. Now, apparently the plan had been she was going to kill herself too. Mm -hmm. So that she didn't have to deal with any of this. So either her attempt to suffocate herself didn't work, or she chickened out. Not really sure. But um, apparently... It's hard to hold a pillow over your face. Long yeah, enough. She but. used plastic bags over their heads. Oh, no. She pinned them down and put plastic bags over their heads. And they were little tiny oh. kids, you know. Oh, Couldn't do God. anything about it. Yeah. So the day after she did it, she, she spent a day with their bodies in her hotel room. Um, and then the day after, she went down to the front desk of the hotel and asked them to please call the police for her. And when the police arrived, she took them upstairs. She showed them the kids and she confessed right there. Told them everything. Oh, my gosh. So they arrested her. Yeah. Of course. And so <clears throat> she went to trial in 2012. But prior to that, her husband went to trial in the UK. Or not her husband, her boyfriend, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, went to um, trial and was given, was sentenced to 16 years in prison for molesting his stepdaughter. Uh, not long after that, he was found dead in his cell. So he took his own life. She tried to take her own life while she was in jail. She went to trial oh. and was convicted of the deaths of her children and given 30 years in prison. And has been on and off suicide watch because she's tried to take her own life. Mm -hmm. It came out in the trial that one of the things that had been going on with them when they were still in the UK is that she was offering holistic services, if you can hear my air quotes, <laughs> which actually was sex work. And her husband was driving her to a house. She would go in and deliver her services, and then he would drive her away. <laughs> deliver her services. <laughs> These people, you guys, horrifying, mm -hmm. horrifying people. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not coming down on sex work. What I am saying though, is that there's a big controversy about whether those two children that she killed in Spain were even Martin Smith's kids at all. Oh, wow. It was believed that they're not and that there was some DNA testing that happened. And then it came out that it's possible that the UK might have sort of accidentally sent the, sent the wrong DNA to Spain. So as far as I can tell, oh. we don't know if those kids were actually his Mm -hmm. or not, or whose they were. Anyway. Um, so now her poor older children, a son and daughter, mm -hmm. who are adults, are just saddled with what their mother did and what their stepfather did. Yeah. Her son, after she was convicted, came out and said, I will never forgive her. I can never forgive her for what she's done. Sure. Um, you don't have to blame do him. You yeah. Know. But one of the things that came out during the trial of Martin Smith was he, you know, said he was a hypnotist, right? Well, all the years that he was molesting his stepdaughter, he would go into her room and hypnotize her. Oh. And she said it didn't work. So she just faked it because she was really afraid. Mm -hmm. And so he would hypnotize her. You're you're getting sleepy. You're getting mm -hmm. deeper, deeper. I mean, it sounds like mm -hmm. maybe he, uh, you know, like learned hypnotism on YouTube. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he was really real anything other than pedophile. Right. Um, after he would wake her back up, um, he would ask her uh, what she'd been doing. And he, she would always say something about having a really good dream. Uh -huh. So this whole time she oh. had to pretend 
because she was afraid for her safety. Sure, yeah. Um, that he was hypnotizing And I'm her. guessing uh, had a pretty good sense that her mother wasn't going to do a damn thing to help her. Yeah, well, clearly, when yeah. mom ran to Spain with him and mm -hmm. left daughter behind. Um, so these are reprehensible people. Yep. They do sort of remind, there's a vibe about this that is similar for sure. to Pat and Lori. They are definitely a... Mm -hmm. fire meets gasoline kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's going to live out her life in a Spanish prison. So she's been in prison about 10 years now. So she still has about 20 years on her sentence. So we, we shall see what happens with that, but she's certainly not got anybody left that gives a damn about her after doing such horrendous things. Mm-hmm. This was wow. a story that just blew me away. Mm -hmm. The the stuff that they did and the choices that she made. Mm -hmm. Ugh. But it was all this paranoia about losing her children um, to child services. So, so she just killed them instead? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yikes. Well, I'm glad that she tr did turn herself in at least and... You know, that they at least had a hold of her and knew what happened to the kids versus mm -hmm. them just vanishing off the face of the earth and no one ever knowing what happened to them. Right. Because that could have happened. It very well could have happened that she, you know, disposed mm -hmm. of their bodies and took off and, you know, mm -hmm. would they find her? Maybe, maybe not, you know. Yeah. I don't know. But that's Leanne and Martin Smith. Two of the worst people I've ever heard of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to kick the mic back over to you for uh, a little Florida man. Okay. Florida man, Florida man, Florida man got arrested. Mm. And this was in Tampa, Florida. And this was back in uh, April. He was 32. Uh, he was arrested at 7 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday on drunken driving charges. Whoa. <laughs> Starting early, dude. Well, or just or, never ended. Yeah. yeah. Guessing the party just went on all night. Seems and like about it. 7 a.m. in the morning, he got in a fender bender. Mm. And as it turned out, he was drunk. So he got arrested and taken to jail. Well, he posted his $500 bail and was freed from the county jail. And then just couldn't let the party end right there. He went ahead and went out to the parking lot at the jail and tried to break into three separate cars. He never even got off the property? <laughs> Good God. No, he did not. And, uh, well, he then was arrested. <laughs> Straight back to jail for you. Uh-huh. Uh, he's facing three new charges of attempted auto burglary. He did bail out again for 15000 And this time he did get the hell right out of there and didn't, you know, try to break into any more cars in the parking lot. Uh, he says that he was simply trying to find his car and his car keys. I mean, your car and keys could be hiding in a stranger's car in the parking lot at the jail. It Stranger uh, things have happened, I guess. Okay. <laughs> you didn't remember I mean, what car he drove? Or, I'm and, guessing he was still not really sobered up. Right, because I'm pretty sure his car got impounded. Not I'm going to say, yeah. Empty. And also that he probably shouldn't have been getting back in it anyway. Right. But who am I to say, apparently? Who, right. Who are we to what say? What do I know? Yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, if you get arrested for a DUI, please don't uh, on that front. But if you do, you know, maybe just call an Uber. Seems like the best plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, that's it. That's it for me. Well, there you have it. We have learned a lot of things to not do today. <laughs> Seems pretty simple. Our, right. This is our Wednesday episode. We'll be back tonight at 7 mm -hmm. p.m. Mountain with our Wednesday night case updates. Yes. 
And uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, you know, we've got a lot of things moving and shaking, a lot of things happening in cases we've been covering recently that have updates. And so we'll be sharing all of that with you. Please mm -hmm. be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. It definitely helps us to grow. Mm -hmm. And go check us out over on Patreon. That is patreon.com slash True Crime Squad. You will find their ways to get all kinds of extra content, bonus content, mm -hmm. by joining our Patreon and supporting us in the work that we do. It's much appreciated. And, and for that, we give you extra episodes that no one except our patrons even get to see. Yeah. yeah. We're just cool like that. Yeah. yeah, we are. Yes, we are. Well, you know it. We are the True Crime Squad. Thanks for being here. Take care. Thank you.